Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know to get the best start possible in Eve Echoes. In today's video we're going to be starting off a little side series looking at the Tech 6 Heavy Cruisers. I've mentioned the Tech 6 Heavy Cruisers at length in a lot of previous videos, especially the ones looking at how to start off as a combat pilot, so I thought it was worthwhile taking a look at each of these individually, showcasing the fit and why you might choose one over the other. We're going to be starting with the Amar Empire Mala, a video that is long overdue on this channel due to the meme-worthy status of its predecessor, we'll talk more about that later. Now if you do enjoy this video or find it useful, let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, dinging that notification bell to never miss an upload. If you still have questions at the end of this video, ask away in the comment section down below, or come join the Catskull Discord linked in the description. There's a bunch of friendly folk there who'll be more than happy to help, and you'll be in with a chance of winning a month of Combo Omega every single week. Finally, if you do want to help support this channel and keep me doing what I'm doing, you can head across to our Redbubble merchandise store, or head across to our Patreon page where you can play to support the channel and how I do everything. Again, that's all linked in the description down below. All that said and done then, let's jump right into talking about the Amar Empire Mala. First of all then, let's take a look at the ship's stats by heading into the Amar Empire ship tree, onto the cruiser branch, and up to tech level 6, where we have the Mala Trainer, and next to it, the Mala itself. And I do recommend just going straight for the Mala, it's usually cheaper, and it is just categorically a better ship. The Mala Trainer, by the way, is more expensive because the price is set by the game, not by how cheap players can produce it. Anyway, so let's have a look at the attributes and fittings here. So first of all, the fitting profile along the top. We have one drone tube that can launch small or medium drones. We don't worry too much about that on this particular ship. We have four high slots for our weaponry, two mid slots for sub weaponry like Nosferatu's, Webifiers, that kind of thing, and five low slots. The five low slots gives us a good amount of variety for things like tanking modules, weapon upgrades, propulsion, that kind of thing there. This is also a two rig ship. You've got two combat rigs and two engineering rigs. We also have a pretty decent power grid output here of 807 megawatts. Remember, power grid is how many, how much things you can fit on it. Different modules have different power grid requirements. Once you have put all the modules onto your ship, they must be lower in power grid requirements than the output of the ship. Hopefully that makes sense. We then have a cargo hold capacity of 960 cubic meters and a fairly solid defense for tech level six at 14,331. Being an Amar ship, most of that is in its armor tank here. You can see 4,544 in the armor with smaller amounts for shield and structure either side of it. Shields being pathetic because it is an Amar ship. Capacitors are pretty strong. Capacitor obviously is the lifeblood of your ship, 3,235 gigajoules with a max capacitor recharge rate of 16.24 gigajoules means that we actually have a pretty fast recharging capacitor with a good size to it as well. So we can be running a lot of different modules and not stressing out too much about running out of power. It is a cruiser at tech level 6, a signature radius of 103.9 is a little bit larger, um, so you are going to be fairly easy to lock on to, um, but we do have actually surprisingly good flight velocity, 262 meters per second, mass and inertia combined to give us an agility rating that does leave a little bit to be desired, the Mala is not a particularly graceful ship, but it is actually surprisingly nippy. If we have a look in the trait description, we can see what you get for training skills with the Mala. If you have trained armor operation, then for each level of armor operation you have trained, you get a 4% increase to your armor resistances. That is a full 20% additional armor resistance if you have armor operation, bone, uh, armor operation level 5, which you really should be aiming for if you're flying the Mala. Along with Cruiser Command giving you an increase of 5% medium laser damage and a 10% reduction to the amount of capacitor that medium lasers require. This means at full training of Cruiser Command 5, you would have 25% additional medium laser damage and a full 50% reduction to the amount of capacitor that your lasers need to fire. That really helps this ship out and those two skills should be the things that you are aiming to get to basic 5 as quickly as possible and this is what makes the Mala such a good ship. All of its bonuses come from basic level skills and what I'm going to be showcasing in this video is using only basic level skills. Everything is trained to basic 5, nothing is but above basic 5. 
The fit that I'm going to be showcasing here uses only basic level skills. As I previously mentioned, everything required to fly this ship is trained up to exactly basic level 5. No advanced skills at all on this character. I'm going to be showcasing a fit that is designed for use in high sec ratting. So going around and doing the various different encounter missions across high sec. I'm doing this in Kaldari space in Novu Kaiken. Obviously this will still work if you wanted to go to somewhere else like Clarilla. Um, and does also work in Nullsec as well. If you are in a Nullsec alliance and you are in an area that has access to tech level 6 or tech level 7 anomalies, this will comfortably do tech level 6 smalls and mediums and will do tech level 7s small and mediums as well, as long as you're careful and know what you're doing. Now, for most of the heavy cruisers, I tend to go for a brawling fit, getting up close and personal, punching them as hard in the face as you can. This uses the short range version of whichever turret. Now, because the Mala is getting bonuses to lasers, that's probably what we should be using. So I fitted medium pulse lasers here, Imperial Navy medium pulse lasers as well. I should note that this entire fit costs less than 35 million. That might sound like a lot at first, but this will make its money back very, very quickly and very, very easily. Now, the reason we go for medium pulse lasers is because they are the highest DPS between pulse and beam. They also have good tracking. That means that they are able to uh, like handle things like the frigates and destroyers fairly comfortably. You see, the optimal range of the lasers is actually 14.49 kilometers, which means we're doing 100% damage at 14.5 kilometers out, which makes these the longest range of the short range turrets, if that makes sense. Um, the accuracy fall off is pretty short and sharp, however, you're down to 50% effectiveness at about 20Ks out, and at 25Ks out, you may as well be doing nothing. You ideally want to be sitting at least at 15 kilometers, if not slightly closer. Now, being a, a Mars ship that uses lasers, despite the fact that we've got a decent enough capacitor, it is still prone to running dry due to how much capacitor lasers use. As such, for our mid slots here, I've gone for two Imperial Navy medium energy Nosferatus. Now, as with all of the fittings here, if all you can get is Mark V variants, this ship will still do very, very well. If you're wanting to be doing Tech 7 medium anomalies in Nullsec, however, you will need to up the meta level to at least the level we're looking at here. These sort of meta level 5 modules, meta level 6 modules are required for that kind of thing there. Um, so the Energy Nosferatu is going to drain energy out of our target and fill up our ship with it. Now in PvE you can never cause an enemy to run out of capacitor, but the Nosferatus do still help to keep your own capacitor topped up. You'll also note we do have a drone here. I've just gone for a Mark IX Infiltrator. Really don't stress about this. It doesn't do much at all. You can see 17.62 DPS. It's really not worth stressing out about. Whatever drone you have available, even if it's just a small drone, pop that in there. And ultimately, you should base your drone based on what enemies you're going up against. If you're going up against enemies that are weak to lasers, for example, shield tank, so Guristus or Angel, um, then absolutely fitting Infiltrators is probably the best. But if you're going out to, say, Blood Raider space um, or Serpentis space, then you'll probably want to fit something like Warriors. But it really doesn't matter all that much. Finally then, for the low slots, I've gone for an Afterburner. This is typical propulsion, just helps us move around the battlefield a little bit easier. I've gone for a red adaptive armor hardener. This is, again, a way to increase the resistances on our armor so we take less damage. If you only have a yellow one available, that will also work really well in both Serpentis, Blood Raider, and Sansha. I would swap to a red one if you are in Guristus or Angel, however, because of the types of damage they do. That doesn't work with yellow ones. You want red ones in those two. Um, a yellow one will work nicely in uh, the other three that I mentioned as well. With armor tanking as well, it tends to be better to go for two repairers. I've gone for two Imperial Navy medium armor repairers, and this is where the meme comes from it, regarding my channel and the Mala. When I first did a video about the Mala, I accidentally fitted small armor repairers. I then spent the rest of the video apologizing that it seemed a lot squishier than I promised it could be, um, and I blamed that on not having the right skills. I definitely have the skills this time, and I definitely have medium armor repairers fitted. All Always check your fit before you undock. 
Finally, I've gone for a Republic Fleet medium capacitor battery here. This you can use to keep the capacitor topped up in your ship nicely. You'll see that in the demonstration in a moment, this could have easily been swapped out for a heat sink. I don't even come close to running low on capacitor, so adding additional damage in the form of a heat sink will allow you to clear anomalies faster and thus earn more ISK per hour. Finally then for the rig slots, in the combat slots I've gone for a collision accelerator and a collision accelerator, I think, no I went for a burst aerator. Two collision, uh, two, a laser collision accelerator and a burst aerator is the best DPS you can get out of these rigs, but it does come at the cost of firing faster, thus using more capacitor. For Mars ships, I do often just go for two collision accelerators, it's a little bit lower DPS but it helps keep your ship cap stable. For the engineering slots, a semiconductor memory cell and a capacitor control circuit give us a little bit of capacitor stability and mean we just don't run out of juice when we're in the battle. Now, all that said and done, let's showcase this in action. This is Pacifying a Workers' Rebellion Advanced. It is a tech level 6 encounter in high sec, and you can see the Mala has absolutely no trouble with this at all. I've got my default orbit range set to 10 kilometers. that's because that's the range at which the Nosferatus are best, and the lasers will handle things quite comfortably there. Now you'll see that my shield has just evaporated, it's gone. We really don't have a shield on this. You don't worry about the shield with an Amar vessel. We've got two armor repairers and you'll see that actually one armor repairer is more than confident of handling this quite comfortably on its own. Now I do recommend in most of these situations going for the small ships first. You'll see here I have the insurgent manticore targeted and as soon as I hit 17 kilometers, which is a good range with the lasers, I open fire and you'll see it goes down pretty quickly. It is a small fast moving target so the lasers do struggle a little bit but not to any concerning degree. That manticore goes down very quickly, the drone helps with that as well um, and then we move on to our next target. You'll see I'm trying to stay close enough as well to actually grab the loot. Don't stress too much if you don't grab the loot, it's a nice additional bit of income on the side especially if you've trained into things like reprocessing, scrap metal reprocessing um, or rig manufacture and stuff like that but really don't stress it too much unless you do industry on the side then it can help a little bit with your risk per hour. For the most part though if you find that it's taking you too long to loot just don't worry about it just clear the anomaly and move into the next encounter or anomaly you'll find you make more money from your bounties that way. Anyway, you'll see we're having no trouble here against anything in this fleet. We've got the uh, the afterburner running, we've got both our Nosferatus comfortably in range there, taking things out. We've got one armor repairer just running without me even thinking about it. We're just leaving that going, drifting through space and comfortably pulling everything apart shot by shot, just ripping through those shields um, with those lasers. And even things like the armor, we just do enough damage that Kaldari ships with their poor armor, we just punch through it nice and quickly. There we are, quickly loot that cruiser wreck, you'll see I'm a little bit too far away, but it doesn't take me long just to come in. It's a bit more involved this, because I'm just outside of looting range most of the time, so you kind of have to stop, drift into loot, and then set the orbit after. Again, you just need to decide whether or not that's worth it for you. Down goes that Caracal, onto the next one, or mower, or whatever it was that just went down. Uh, I think it was Korax, actually, <laughs> but there we go. Um, and we're just happily orbiting around in a circle, taking these out one by one. No stress at all here, with one of the two armor repairers running, um, this is more than comfortably doing this. I've taken this through the Tech 7 encounters in high sec as well, and you never need more than one of these running. If you are in null sec and you're looking to do some of the, like, the medium Tech 7 anomalies, then yes, you will need both armor repairers running, but the ship can handle that. Um, that's where the battery does come in useful, although you are capacitor stable for the most part. It's only if you're out of range with the Nosferatus, or if you are being drained by some other target that you really need to worry about that. For here though, you can see the battery was probably overkill. A heatsink would have been a better option for me, simply because that would have allowed me to kill things faster, thus moving into the next anomaly just that little bit quicker.
As for swapping any of the other slots around, there's not much I would really recommend. You can theoretically go for uh, the beam lasers rather than pulses for a bit of extra range, but the loss in DPS doesn't really matter considering that you're not saving anything. You'd have to drop one of the armor repairers and the battery um, and add in a couple of heat sinks to get decent DPS, um, at which point you do open yourself up for weaknesses. I do honestly prefer this brawling build or skirmishing really it should be referred to as, um, as we can sit at 10 kilometers and just zap things with those lasers nice and comfortably. No stress, no worries, just jump into an anomaly or an encounter, kill everything, move on to the next one and claim your reward, and just keep doing that and you'll find that you make your money back in no time at all. Just please do remember to use the commendation system to double your bounty ticks. If you're not sure what I'm talking about with that, um, do check my video on commendations and how they work. It was also mentioned in the news encounter video. Anyway, with all that said and done, there we go. That is a nice and easy encounter. We've not dropped below half capacitor. Our armor is still at full 100%. This ship has no trouble at all handling this kind of content. Hopefully, that will help you out. Good luck in space, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.